Hi, I'm Brett Rosenzweig with the Almond Board of Australia and today I've got David Madge, Senior Research Scientist with Agriculture Victoria who is going to chat to us today about carob moth as an almond pest. Yes, carob moth is thought to have originated in the Mediterranean region. Um, it's related to America's worst almond pest, the navel orange worm. And globally, it's a pest of a wide range of tree crops, including nuts like pistachios, almonds, walnuts and so on, as well as citrus, pome fruit, um, dates, you know, many other economic crops. Carob moth has been known to, be a, to have been a pest in almonds in Australia since the 1960s but it really only rose its head as a, as a major economic pest of almonds during our wet season of 2011. Um, I think that, that the issue about 2011, it was a very wet year, and at that point the almond industry had been growing exponentially, so we had a wet season, more disease issues on trees, huge crop expansion, so we ended up with a very large growth in the number of mummy nuts left on trees after harvest, and that's where carob moth breeds, so the population just exploded. Here's an example of mummy nuts that have been left on the tree since the previous harvest. Mummies like these are a critical resource for carob moth in the almond orchard because they're basically the only food it has between harvest of one season and whole split the next. Inside the mummies, the kernels provide ideal breeding habitat for carob moth, a food resource and egg laying sites and during winter and spring you can often find infested nuts that have um, carob moth pupae and if we're lucky larvae feeding in them. It's in, in the almond orchard carob moth is basically living inside mummy nuts in, on the trees over winter for late autumn, all of winter and early spring, developing as larvae and pupae. In spring, from about mid-September onwards, for about a three-month period, those pupae mature and emerge as moths, which fly and mate and lay eggs on mummy nuts again. The second generation, which starts to emerge around about early December, will also start laying their eggs on mummy nuts, but they'll start infesting the new crop when the new crop splits, so hull split in early January and that's when the new crop becomes infested. Well, the reason that carob moth is a serious concern to the almond industry is that they cause severe damage to almond kernels and basically reduces their, their value from being a first grade crop. So in the very early stages of infestation they can actually be very difficult to separate because they both cause quite small holes going into the kernel and that's hard to pick up either visually or through sorting equipment in the packing shed. After a short time though what carob moth tends to do is tunnel through the nut and across the surface of the nut making quite obvious channels in the brown skin of the nut. They produce webbing, silken webbing um, in the kernel and they produce frass or excreta which is quite lumpy and it's quite obvious, obviously lumpy when you look at it and they're quite often things like pupil cases or larvae in the infested nut. With Carpophilus they tend to tunnel into the kernel and then hollow the kernel out from the inside and sometimes they'll leave the brown skin intact and have the, the, the kernel meat chewed out and the, the material they leave behind is like a very fine powder or a very fine almond meal compared to the lumpy frass of carob moth. Carpophilus also produce no silken webbing. In the processing plant, really early stages of infestation of both pests are very difficult to detect because it may simply be a pinhole in the kernel. Older um, stages of infestation with carob moth are easier to detect and to, to sort out of the processing line because of the scarring that they cause to the kernels themselves and damaged, um, kernel damaged by carob moth can be used for lower value um, processing like meal and so on. With, with Carpophilus, they're usually harder to detect at any stage because there may simply be a single entry hole into the kernel which is very hard to pick up with the sorting equipment that's used. And because those kernels may contain beetles, they have very limited end use. 
Well, the first thing we can do is to inspect mummy nuts during winter and early spring to see what level of infestation we have, because that's the infestation we'll be carrying into the new season and that's going to affect the new crop. We can also use simple traps to monitor moth activity during the season once moths start emerging in early spring. Um, these basic traps are just a shelter containing a sticky base and a pheromone lure, which is a sex pheromone that attracts the male moths. So here's a the sticky base from the trap, it's covered with a layer of sticky material that moths get stuck into. The pheromone plug is impregnated with a sex pheromone that attracts male moths. And you can see a couple of freshly caught moths here. And if these are monitored regularly, it can give you a good idea of what the population is doing during the season. Currently, almond growers in Australia have three options for managing carob moth. Firstly, the key is going to be controlling um, mummy nuts in the orchard. If we can get rid of mummy nuts, we'll prevent them developing in the first place. We're getting rid of the resource that carob moth requires, so the populations shouldn't be able to sustain themselves in almond orchards. The second option, which is still in experimental mode, is mating disruption or mating confusion. This is a technique of flooding the orchard with the same sex pheromone that's used in the traps that we just saw. It basically reduces the rate of mating within the orchard because males can't locate females very effectively. And by doing that over time, you reduce the number of viable eggs being laid and reduce infestation of the new crop. The third option available to growers in Australia is an insecticide option where insecticide can be applied in spring to reduce the population level or at hull split to try to protect the new crop from eggs that are laid on that crop.